it's time to talk about permutations. And permutations is just another way to count things. Um, so we're using permutations to count a certain number of arrangements. Okay? And permutations, one of the important things to remember is that order matters. In permutations, it is an ordered arrangement of objects. If the order does not matter, that's a different type of counting method. But if the order of the things that you are arranging matters, then permutations is what you want to use, or you want to use a permutation. So order matters. OK, so um, if we look at the, uh, the equation or the formula for permutations, it looks like this n, little n, p, r, n, p, r, and then n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. And uh, when we look at this, we need to make sure of a couple of things. First of all, we need to make sure that n is always greater than or equal to r. If for some reason this was flip-flop and n was less than or equal to r, then we would it would be an impossible uh, situation that we that we didn't wouldn't want to uh, couldn't be able to use wouldn't be able to use, um, but in this case n is the total number of objects that, that you have, and r is the total number of objects that you are picking and placing. I like to use those words pick and place. If you are picking and placing into a particular order, once again, order comes up, then you're dealing with a permutation. And this is what it would look like. So let's jump right into an example. Um, again, n, let me write this down for you. n is the total number of objects that you have. And r is the number of objects that you are picking and placing. So I'll just draw an arrow over here. R is the number that you are picking and placing. So here's our example. Mr. Mays has 10 new Star Wars figures, but only three spots to hang them on the wall. How many ways can Mr. Mays hang the figures in the first, second, and third spots? So once again, there's a few key words here. Let's pick out those key words. Um, the first one is how many ways. That tells you that you are dealing with either a permutation or a combination. And in this case, we have to ask ourselves, does the order matter? Well, it says, how many ways can Mr. Mace hang the figures in the first, second, and third spots? So here I can see that order matters. Okay. For example, <clears throat> try to take this page down a little bit further. For example, um, let's say I had Darth Vader, Chewbacca, and R2-D2. Those are the three figures. Well, this order in the first spot, second spot, and third spot would be different than Chewbacca, Darth Vader, and then R2-D2. Those two are different arrangements. The order matters. So that tells me, once again, that I am dealing with a permutation and not a combination. Combination is a different video that I'll do um, a little bit later on. So here we go. Let's go down to this, this uh, problem. And let's bring our formula down here with us so we can pick out what we have. <clears throat> so here we go. Mr. Mace has 10 new Star Wars figures. So n is the total number that we have. That's 10. And I want to know, there's, uh, there's only three spots to hang them on the wall. So I want to choose three to hang on the wall in a particular order. So r is equal to 3. So let's do the math. This would look like 10 P3. And lots of times people will say 10 pick 3. 10 pick 3. Because it starts with a P, we are picking and placing. All right, let's put it into the formula. N is 10. So this would be 10 factorial. And then on the bottom, I would have N minus R, which is 10 
minus 3 factorial, and this would be equal to 10 factorial divided by 7 factorial. Now, if you've watched the, one of the other videos on factorials, you should know that a factorial, like 10 factorial, is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So let's write that out. 10 times, whoops, I didn't mean, mean to put the factorial in there. Let's take that out. This would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. There's my numerator. And the denominator is 7 factorial. So this would be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So there is uh, the numerator divided by the denominator. Now check this out. This is kind of nice. Because when I compare these, I can see since this is all multiplication and division, I can reduce. I can reduce this. These two, I don't like to say cancel out. Uh, let's say they, they become 1. So 7 divided by 7 is 1. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and so is 4 divided by 4, 3 divided by 3, 2 divided by 2, and 1 divided by 1. So these more or less <coughs> disappear, and I'm left with 10 times 9 times 8. And we should know, let's see, let's do it like this. 9 times 8 is 72, and 72 times 10 is 720. So now, if I wanted to answer this question... I could, let's type it in there, make it look a little bit nicer. And we could say, Mr. Mays can hang three of his ten Star Wars figures in 720 different ways, period. Since we have a word problem, it's nice to answer it in a sentence or a complete sentence. So there's an example that deals with permutations. Okay? Permutations, order matters. You need to pick out your N and your R. Some of the key words that you want to look for are how many ways, and then check to see if the order matters. If it does, you're going to use this formula and then put it into your equation and see what reduces out and then do your math and you can get your answer. So there's an example, there's a mini lesson on permutations and an, and an example to go along with them.